Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Today we've got a beautiful old television. It's an Electronica 23TB 307D. It's a Soviet made TV. I think it's absolutely gorgeous in its design, but it's definitely a little worse for the wear. So we are going to clean this guy up, or gal, um, try to get it working and uh, see what we can do. I haven't tried turning it on. I did see a video that the seller sent me where when he turned it on, there was a single white line across the center, horizontal line across the center of the screen. That tells me we have a vertical deflection problem. Could be a problem with the yoke. Could be um, something as simple as a bad capacitor. First order of business is to clean this up. It's kind of like when you wash your car and it feels like your car actually runs better because it's clean. Uh, so maybe I'm a little bit superstitious, but I think we need to give it a quick wipe down. Then the strategy is to open it up, see if there's anything that we see that's wrong, fix that, and then we're going to introduce some power and try to power it up, maybe using a Variac and um, possibly a dim bulb tester that I built for this project. So definitely stay tuned for that. And for now, let's just give it a quick, uh, quick inspection. Okay, so here we go, guys. Lots, looks like this thing might have been submerged in water at some point. We're gonna start getting some of that off it. So at least, wow, look at this. Look at this. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, black and white television. Looks like the price has rubbed off. Uh, no dates, but these started to be made, if I'm not mistaken, in 1979 uh, at, a, at a factory in Kharkov, Ukraine. Be careful, high voltage. It's forbidden to turn it on when the case is not on the, on the television. But guess what, guys, we're gonna do exactly that. Oh, and check this out here. So this is actually, these televisions came with a proprietary plug because you could run them off of, you could run them off of DC, 12 volts DC, like from a car battery or AC. And these guys, I guess at some point lost the plug. I very often retrofit these so that they have a, a, a modern AC plug receptacle, which we might do here, I'm not sure, but one thing's for sure, we're not gonna keep this janky. They just soldered wires directly to the, to the pins, which is not something we're gonna continue with. So as you can see, missing a few buttons, I'm missing the main channel knob. We have these three knobs right down here, brightness, contrast, and sound. And uh, we have the main power switch, which is nice. And you can see it's already starting to separate here. So without further ado, let's get this case off, see what we can do. off. Wow, we've got a first thing I noticed that we have a lot of rust on the chassis. So this confirms our our suspicions that this was almost certainly uh, underwater for some period of time. Also down here we can see on the on the speakers the speakers are in pretty rough shape but I don't see too much bodge work. So here's a bodge wire of some sort. Uh, here's another one here. Now, if this is anything like the other electronicas, we can remove a few screws and it should, it should open up. It should fold down. These televisions were really well made, all handmade on the boards, which is really cool.
All right, so this part, I'm pretty sure, will fold down. This is also, I can see, bent, so something must have set on top of this for a really long time, something heavy. Okay, here we go, here's the insides. Wow! Wow, can you guys see that? I don't think I've ever seen a TV in quite that bad condition. Okay, so these other, these other sides, this one's actually in kind of okay shape. How does this side stay looking good? I don't know. Okay, wow. I mean, this old gal has really been through a lot. I don't know if we're gonna be able to bring this one back, guys. But we will try. And I don't think the wet wipes are gonna handle this very well. I'm gonna do some alcohol swabs here. Why clean it, you ask? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Why clean it? Tells the machine that we care about it and makes me think that maybe we have more of a chance. Let's her know that we're here not to take her apart and steal her parts, but to try to bring her back to life. So the date code on these caps, I'm looking at um, uh, January 1991 on these caps here. So this set is 30 years old. I actually found a high resolution schematic for this device and I will post a link to it down below in the description. It's really a nice scan. Somebody took the time to scan at high resolution and they did a bunch of different images and I stitched them together. If you have a TV like this, feel free to use that schematic. Okay, so here's one of our ICs. One of the ICs, I think, is responsible in part for vertical deflection. The schematics all actually tell us what the voltages should be off of each of these leads coming off these chips. Um, okay, this side's a little better. We've got some, looks like mouse poop. This side's cleaner, so maybe it was only half underwater. All right, so if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's the flyback transformer, which we're not going to touch. This side's a lot cleaner. Here's a 750 volt cap, uh, 0.01 microfarad. Here's a 63 volt, 10 microfarad cap, 5% cap. I think these are paper capacitors with a um, metal casing to it. I'm not sure. Here's our fuse. Oh, look, somebody, look at this, guys. Somebody couldn't spend the three cents it takes to buy a new fuse and uh, put a wire bypassing the actual fuse here, which is just stupid. Why would, why would you do that? So this fuse is almost certainly gone. Fuse is dead. So we're gonna replace that. Well, that tells you that whoever was taking care of it wasn't taking good, very good care of it. The question is what kind of, there's a two on here. What are their kind of, 19T, 19T. Okay, I don't know what that is exactly. I'm gonna go with a 1.5 amp fuse and see if that gets us to where we need to be. The only fuse that I could find on the schematics was a 0.25, a 0.25 amp fuse. So I have one of these in my fuse kit here. Uh, 0.25, 250 volts. If for some reason that pops, maybe we'll go to a higher one. Seems kind of low, 0.25 amps, but uh, what do I know? Okay, so here's our power supply down here. That's what I want to get out, if it's possible to get that out. But they really don't make that very easy. Okay, so it looks like the power supply, if you can see it, which is right down here, is in pretty rough shape. It appears to have definitely been submerged at some point. Okay, so that was interesting. So this just fell out. This just fell out of the TV, a, like some metal tweezers. Look at the size of this. This was just hanging out inside the television. How does this get inside? How does this even happen? 
You're a technician and you, first of all, these are like eyebrow tweezers. I don't understand. All right, we're going to hit some of these pots with some deoxid. Give them a quick spray. Give them a little back and forth. Pretty stiff. Okay, roughly it was there, roughly. I gotta say, this is not as easy as some of the other electronica sets to work on. Some of the others just fold open really beautifully, and this one has this cage around it that makes it a little more difficult. Can I take this off, or like, what's the deal here? All right, I don't see any caps that have, that clearly need attention. Maybe we should pull one of these caps off. 10, 10 microfarad. Maybe we should pull one of these caps off and just see where things stand with that. So the, here's date code 1990, June of 1990. And I'm just kind of curious what, what that looks like. I pulled out this cap at random which before I tried to wipe off the dirt said 1,000 microfarads at I think 16 volts. It measured using this little hoo-ha that my daughter decorated. It measured in at 950, 955 microfarads, but 3.5 ohms. Okay, it's not ter terrible, I guess, but I couldn't bring myself to put it back in there, so I put in a new cap. I'm not planning to recap this whole thing right now. That would really take a long time, and. I don't even know if this thing is safe, salvageable. It's in very rough condition. But while I was there, I went ahead and threw one in. So now what I think I'm going to do is, you know, if I can figure out where that vertical deflection circuit is, I'll go there and probably pull the caps there and see what the story is with them. If I don't see anything really serious, we might just go ahead and try to turn this thing on, bring it up slow like on a Variac. Wish there was a better way to clean boards than what I'm doing right here. Okay, so here we go. It looks like on board A3, we have the vertical sizing potentiometer, and here's the, I guess, resolution, vertical resolution. So I'm going to say A3 around these guys is where our circuit is. Not that many capacitors here. I see a bunch of resistors. So that's roughly, so let's just take that R19 and R21 are the potentiometers that control that. So let's see if we can find A3, A10, A2. A3, pretty rusty. R21, here they are. R19 and R21 are these two potentiometers. And so, where does that leave us? Um, maybe we should just try a couple of these caps on, the, on this board, see what the story is with these, because a bad cap could be the problem. There should be a thousand microfarads. 737 with 0 0.16, 0 0.16 ohms. So let's pull that guy out of there. Put some new ones in. 35 volts, 1,000 microfarad. That's good. And you know what? That pad is gone. Hello. That pad is gone. Maybe that wasn't even making contact at all. Maybe it's worth going through all of these. Okay. Okay, this doesn't look like much. This is Optimus Prime. This is my Variac. So we're gonna use this. We're gonna bring the voltage up slow. And that way, if there's any major problems, anything happens, we can dial it back down again. I have a digital readout here. More or less matches the numbers on the dial, but you never know, so I attach that digital readout. Okay, now I've also got some plugs from some other Electronica televisions that I think are operational, uh, just a little bit janky. So hopefully this will work for us. But we're gonna need a Soviet to European adapter. 
to make this work. Okay guys, so here we go. We've got video sport turned on, test pattern. We've got Variac plugged in, we've got the television plugged into this, which I'm, which I'm doing now. And we've got the power switch on. And here we go, coming up slow. I hear sound. Okay, so the sound knob is not particularly great. It doesn't turn off. Something, okay. Just have to bear with me on the sound, guys. Okay, 223 volts, 220, 220 volts. And we have a horizontal line. Okay, so that's contrast. That makes a difference. Brightness makes a difference. But we clearly still have a problem with the vertical deflection. We're not getting... Let me turn it off so you can hear me okay. We're not getting... Uh, still not getting good raster on the screen. So I'm going to go back into that circuit and take a look and see if we can figure out what's going on there. Okay guys, so here's the board with the vertical deflection. And I'm noticing a few things. First of all, we've got what looks to be a broken... That's a ground, that would be the ground probably. Broken solder joint. Okay, cold solder joint on one of these guys. Looks like number five. Number five is going where? Number five is going to, uh, looks, like, looks like speakers. So probably not super important, but if that one's broken, the other ones might be broken too. So we're gonna go through and reflow that. And maybe we'll just check some of our continuity across this board because uh, the problem is here somewhere. Yeah, the problem is here. Okay, let's check some continuity here, guys. Oh, what is going on with my meter today? Okay, but why is that not connecting to here? I can't tell if my meter is having problems or if there's a... Ground seems to be intermittent around the edge of this board. And so rather than risk it, we're just gonna run a bodge wire to make sure that we can get ground. If there's no ground, of course, it's a problem. So I bought this wire from Elenco. They do awesome work. It wasn't the cheapest solid core wire, but I wanted to make sure that what I bought was always gonna serve me well. These guys don't mess around. So for me, it was worth the extra couple of bucks. Thank you, Ellen Co. for always making great products. Let's see what we need to do here. Why don't we just go all the way across, just like that. So maybe this is totally unnecessary. But, you know, there's no easy answers right now. Let's just start ruling things out. Well, you know what we could do? We could test the voltages on these ICs. I think maybe we'll do that. Okay, so um, the camera cut out. I'm not sure how much of that you got, but basically this is one of the ICs on, in the area of the circuit that deals with vertical deflection. And the schematics actually give us voltages for what this, this should be. And so we are going to, we are gonna compare the voltages with what's in the schematics. So one should have no volts, 10.2. Why, why is that 10.2? Okay, pin two should have 4.5. Oh, wait, something's not right. Pin three should have 5.5, .5, but it's 5.1. Pin four should have, no. Pin four should have, 
What's going on? Point three should have zero. Am I doing this backwards? Yes, I am. <laughs> so here, let's do one. This should have nothing on it. No, there should be no voltage on this line. And look how it's jumping around there. Okay, that's interesting. Pin two should have 4.5. Pin three should have zero. And I've got five volts. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. This is, gotcha. This is pin three right here. It has zero. Pin four has five. That's correct. Four, it says five, it says it should be 5.5. .5. Pin five should be eight volts, it's 709. So a lot of these are like 10 or 15% down from where they should be. Pin six should be 11.5, and we have, sorry, 10.2. Again, like 10% down. Pin seven should be 11.5 also, 10.25. I mean, this is labeled six here, and this would be, and this is pin five, but there's only eight pins plus these big guys. So I have to assume if that's one, if that's five, and that's six, that this actually has 10 pins, and these are pins. So this is the third pin, and this is the eighth pin. Let's go. So pin 10 should have nothing, it's got zero volts. Pin nine should have zero, it's got five volts. Pin whatever funky pin this is. Okay, I don't think they're counting this, but they are counting that side, which makes no sense to me. I need to spend some time in the schematics and see what's going on with these chips. And back, sort of backtrack and see what's feeding them and why everything's so low. Okay guys, um, after, I meter, after I metered all of the pins on these ICs, I went through and I was kind of backtracking and seeing what's what and um, played with a couple of the uh, potentiometers and look what we've got. We've got raster. I mean this bar right here is from the camera. The reality is it's flashing quite a bit, but we have some sort of image. So this is a huge progress from white horizontal line. Now, me being a total amateur, it makes me really nervous to poke around inside televisions while they're turned on. So I've basically just been playing with the, um, the various potentiometers that we have here. I tried plugging in the video sports. I don't even know if it's getting signal from this janky antenna thing in the back. But this is progress. We've made some progress. Um, the goal, of course, is the test pattern. We don't have a test pattern yet, but we're, we're getting closer. So uh, I'm going to keep messing around with it. See, this one's acting like it has very poor grounding. When I touch this, it responds. So guys, check this out. When I close this lid, it goes back to the horizontal line. When I open this lid up, it goes back to normal. What's going on? What's causing that? Bad connection? What would be causing that? Right at the end. Is it because that capacitor is touching the transformer? Can't be it. It can't be the reason. Okay, I'm gonna kill the power, and we're gonna work on this a little more. Okay guys, so I've been looking around here. First thing is, uh, this screw seemed like it was a lot longer than it needed to be. And it holds the transformer in, but I think it might have been making contact with one of these potentiometers. So I shortened that screw, pulled two of these out of circuit, these two, uh, this one was the one that was, when I touched it, was making a different signal. They're both fine. I double checked to make sure that my bodge wire is actually going to ground, it is. I pulled these two diodes out of circuit and tested them, they're both fine. All the caps have been replaced. So really, oh, I'm sorry, that's a lie. There's three caps here haven't been replaced, these small blue guys that don't look original. Oh, there's another one. Four blue guys, don't look original to me. So maybe the next step is actually pulling those out because past that, 
It's transistors and resistors, basically. Let me pull those out and check them and see what the story is. Okay, so we've got picture, we've got raster. No well, picture, we have raster. Looks kind of a little bit better actually now. Oh, you know what? Aha! It's not doing that funny thing anymore when I closed it. So I think we have fixed the horizontal line problem. That's awesome. So now the question is, can we get a signal into it? Can we get test bars? Video Sport is telling me that it is playing Pong. Thank you, Video Sport. Okay, let's shut it down for a minute. And pull the power. Close this up. So we got, we fixed the first problem. We fixed the problem of the horizontal line. And then it was an intermittent horizontal line. And then, um, and now we've got raster, like consistent raster. What we don't have is, uh, what we don't have is picture, any sort of test signal. And that's really what I would like. That's really what I would like. So we're gonna keep plugging away here. Okay, guys, so I've been doing a lot of sort of general maintenance stuff here um, while I turn the problem over in my head trying to figure out why we don't have the test signal. I fixed the hinges on all of these fold-out flaps, so now next time I come in here, it's not a big mess. I went ahead and checked this potentiometer, the volume, which should be turning the volume all the way off and then on because we're getting sound even though this is turned all the way off. It was fine. I straightened out this carriage, which was causing a lot of problems with this flipping down. So what I'm thinking about doing, guys, is I'm thinking about putting it all back together because we, we solved the main problem. The main problem was it was a horizontal line that was nothing. Like That's not even a television. It's not even a monitor or anything. Okay, guys, you probably can't tell, but it is actually dark outside now. I've been doing this uh, all day. I think we made a lot of progress on this. It was almost dead when we got it, just a horizontal line. Now we've got raster on the screen. I have it off right now because this, <laughs> the sound is uncontrollable. And if I had it on, um, you would just hear this uh, the whole time. So um, I can see some sort of signal from the video sport. So I can see that it's getting some sort of signal. I don't know if the problem is the antenna ports here. I don't know what's going on, but I can't get the, I can't get the test pattern. Um, so I'm gonna throw in the towel for now. The case to this that I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put it back together. I think in a future video, I'm gonna try some of my plastic restoration and see if that can bring some life back into this. These things fell out of it today. It's a lot of history in this thing. I mean, these are eyebrow, metal eyebrow. This is not a small thing. These are metal eyebrow pluckers uh, that had been in here for how many decades? It's, it's I don't know how that happens. But um, if you have ideas on how, what might be causing the problems with the signal, uh, I would love to hear them. Comment down in the, in the comments. Leave a comment in the comment section. And um, maybe if we, if we there's some ideas, maybe we'll come back and revisit this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give, give, please give it a subscribe because we've got more projects like this on the way. Thanks for watching everyone and uh, see you on the next one.